on this week's episode of Marketing O'Clock. Google has another new update, but this time it has some specific advice for evergreen success. Picture this. Image extensions are coming to a desktop device near you. This is an episode you don't want to miss. All on today's show. You know what time it is. It's officially Marketing O'Clock. We bring you all the digital marketing news of the week, powered by the digital marketing community. If you want to join the conversation, hit us up. We are at Marketing O'Clock everywhere, and you can join our community on Discord at community.marketingoclock.com. We record every week from the Cypress North Studios in beautiful Buffalo, New York, to bring you our famous Friday news show. You can subscribe to our show at youtube.marketingoclock.com or wherever you consume your podcast. Head over to marketingoclock.com slash newsletter to receive every article we cover straight to your inbox. Hey there, I'm Christine Zernheld. A.K.A. Shep. I'm Jess Butt. And I'm Greg Finn. And it is officially Marketing O'Clock. Here on December 10th, 2021. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for another, what is sure to be a fantastic episode here. <laughs> Lots of news to get to. But before that, Greg Finn has told me that he has something he just needs to get off of his chest. So I'm just going to let you have the floor. Well, Jill mentioned it. And I was talking about it last week where I don't look at my profile and I had the AdWords term on there like three times. I haven't looked at it in like six years. And then I said, it's because I hate myself, right? And I'm heading in, and I sit here in the middle of the night now because Caleb has moved on, and I'm editing myself. And I'm in like vertical position. Like I'm editing the side shot of my face, and I'm about to hit 40, and like I've got this this looming midlife crisis coming, and so like I'm just panicked about being so old. Like to me, forty was always like you're old, and up until that point, you're like young. And I mean, it's easy to feel young around y'all because you don't have like any cool points at all. So like I still feel young. <laughs> Thanks. But just one of the reasons why I'm standing by that previous statement and doubling down on that statement for twenty two for twenty twenty two is the next day after our show. We had a lot of good feedback. A lot of people are sharing that like, oh, you are a top podcast. People were listening to you for a long time. So I rolled over to my wife in bed and I'm like, hey, it was really cool. Yesterday, a lot of people said that they listened to us for a long time, like their favorite podcast. Listen to us for thousands of hours here in 2021. She turns around, looks at me right in the eye and says, that sounds awful. <laughs> So, she me. so that's so it. Much. I'm doubling down, double the hatred, and we're pulling ourselves up this year. This, I am officially claiming 2022 as the year of Greg. It is the year of Greg 2022. We've been dormant for too long. And we? Who's yes, we? All the Gregs. All the Gregs. <laughs> Anybody listens and resonates as a Greg, it's the year of us. It's the okay. YOU, the year of us resonates here. Resonates as a Greg. Right, yes. <laughs> It's our year. We are going to out hustle, hustle culture. We're going to out caffeinate Tim Horton. We are going to outwork Tim Apple. And we're going to out V. Gary. It's our year <laughs> this year. All right. And we are bringing it back. It is the year of us, the year of Greg. And we're doing it. Okay. So it sounds like to be Greg of the year in 2022 would be the highest honor. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yes, because it's the year of Greg. It's the Yag. And then if you take your name <laughs> and you put your initial at the end, it just sound, a mate always sounds good. It's like the Yaj, the year of chess. I don't like that. It's right? not my year, though. The Yas, it's yours. The year of yeah. Shep. Like, this works. Yas. It's our pretty- year. <laughs> Yas. <laughs> yes. So you're listening out here. 2022 <laughs> is our year, and we're going to have better side profiles. I'm doing <laughs> nothing but powdered eggs and protein mix. And <laughs> anything with a P. I don't know. <laughs> like what else is there? <laughs> but it's our year. It's our year this year. That's I'm, decla- I'm declaring it now and going ahead early. Okay. Congratulations. I'm happy for you. And I'm excited for all the Gregs out there. I didn't realize that you could just like identify as a Greg. Yeah. It's, 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 it's inclusive. So maybe I need some to spend some time reflecting to de- decide if I'm a Greg, you know? Yeah. You, you, can, you can be. It's You're not a Greg. Do you want to have a good 2022? <laughs> Of course. Then you're in. Okay. Welcome to the club. Okay. So we're going to have to see who wins Greg of the Year this year, and then it's going to be the most prestigious honor next year. I'm excited for you guys. Thanks. It's, it's us all. It's, the, it's, it's us. Y-O-U. Okay. It's the year of you. <laughs> 
Speaking of those Spotify rap numbers you were just talking about, we wanted to thank everyone again. Um, people were starting to share last week that we made one of their top five podcasts in Spotify rap for 2021. And it is such an honor to see how much you guys have been listening to us. Um, more people are sharing this week. If you ha if you haven't told us yet and we're in your Spotify wrapped, please tweet out and let us know and share with the class. And we're working on a really exciting special giveaway for anyone who shares that we made their Spotify wrapped. Jess, I don't know if you've seen this. I have not. Well, while you're sending it over, I realized I had pork rinds and peanuts for lunch today. Oh yeah, those are peas. Yes. How powerful. Exactly. <laughs> This? Where, where are you sending this? I'm just going to show you. Oh, okay. <laughs> no. Sammy Man. Sammy Man. <laughs> no relation to Charlie. Charlie. <laughs> Sammy Hansen, who is on the mic today, made a beautiful, gorgeous die cut sticker. It is inspired by Sean Ellie, and it is a pickup truck. And the pickup truck is named Performance Max. And it has some beautiful <laughs> flags with like, you know, the little click symbol and the charts going up. It's going through like water or dirt, it looks like. It's really performing to the max. And we've got the font on the back that Performance Max. And the license plate says no data. <laughs> I love that. I didn't catch that when you just showed me. But it's a zero. Yes. Oh, it's a zero. Marketing and clock bumper sticker. And then we got Sean in the front seat throwing up. Is this rock and roll? The rock the and horns. roll. The horns. Hands. Oh, yeah. the horns. So um, this is just going to look really beautiful, gracing. You got your computers, your water bottles. Anyone who we made their Spotify wrapped and you let us know, you're going to get this. We're going to send it to you. Thank you. And then also, heads up, we have released the Agency Scoop episode for this month. It is with Jill Fetcher and the pride of Avon, yes, not you got Avon. Right. No, Avon. <laughs> Casey Gillette, not Cassie Gillette. Number one export <laughs> since Tom Walls. They have a lot of exports, it seems like. No, they don't. Yeah, they, they sell like lipstick like, and, and skincare. Oh, how dare you. <laughs> but they're talking about the biz and they're talking about when you should work with an agency or when you should hire someone in-house. So it's a really great episode. You can catch it wherever you're listening to this or at cypressnorth.com. Yeah, and if you haven't listened before, we've revamped it a little bit. Jill talks about some things going on here at the agency this week or this month. She talks about a scoring system that we have put in place for finding the right clients that fit us because we're you know, in a, in, a, in a nice spot where we're looking to find the right type of client for us. Check it out. And getting into the news here, Google Ads announced this week that image extensions, which if you didn't know, these quote, complement your search ad with relevant visuals, are now eligible to display on desktop SERPs. These previously only showed on mobile devices, but now they're going to display on desktop as well, which is really exciting. So here's a quote from the article. It says, if you're already using image extensions, they'll show on desktop devices automatically as the update rolls out. You can review your device performance by segmenting your performance data by device. This update applies to dynamic image extensions as well. And that kind of made me gasp because I don't know if I knew dynamic image extensions. <laughs> like, I think I knew in the back of my mind, but I just turn off all automated extensions. So I like forgot they were a thing, but they're also improving these. So it says dynamic image extensions use machine learning to automatically select the most relevant image from your ad's landing page and append them to your ad. Once you opt in, we'll add images from your landing pages to their corresponding ad groups in your search campaigns. Previously, dynamic image extensions were only available in English. Now they're available in all languages. I just worry that they're going to pull. I guess it's nice that it's just the landing page and it's not your whole website like. I would think that they would do your whole website. You know, like Google. <laughs> but I just worry they're going to pull in. Like, have you ever seen someone share a Twitter article and it pulls in like the grainy headshot? Yeah. Yes. Like, I'm just worried about this and I would highly recommend turning it off. That just doesn't sound good to me. Um, they're also adding a searchable library of stock images for image extensions that are free to use in Google ads. So, Which is yeah. And I think of this, it's like, corresponding with the desktop rollout, right? So it's like B2B people are like, what image <laughs> extensions are we going to use? I'm just picturing like a guy in a suit. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah the awesome. camera. <laughs> Success. <laughs> <laughs> it's just all the business memes are coming at us. Like, really, I was trying to think for my B2B accounts. And I know it's like probably best practice to have these in there, like to test and see how they affect performance. But it's going to be tricky. Yeah, it stuck in, people are Cheesy. so savvy to that now. Yeah. They just know. I don't know if it's going to help you. Try it if it's all you got. But 
And I don't know if you saw the release, but um, here's a little uh, note here for you. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is hot off the presses here. Hot On glossy presses. paper, it says, <laughs> Google stated that to get going with dynamic image extensions, quote, look for the add dynamic image extensions recommendation in the recommendations page. Recommendations page. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> kind of surprised they didn't link directly to the extensions page. <laughs> Instead, you can find it on the recommendations page, conveniently located under expand your reach with Google search partners <laughs> above raise your budgets and next to upgrade your existing keywords to broad match. I have literally no idea why they did that. You don't? <laughs> I think I do. No. It, it seems, yeah, it and aligns. I was think great joke. I was thinking that reading this article, they're like, oh, just go ahead and find it on from the image extensions page. It is so hard to find. I forget three times a year how to find my automated extensions. You got to press the dot, dot, dot in the right corner. It looks like it's nothing. They're trying to hide them from us because they want you to go to the recommendations tab. And Let us hear that glossy paper. <laughs> Sorry, that was bad for audio. And apply all the other ones as well. Great joke. <laughs> And Menahan Lani made an interesting point about this. He replied and said, I don't have it in front of me, something along the lines of, remember when Google said they would never show banner ads? Because there's this quote from Melissa, Marissa Mayer from 2005. It says, quote, there will be no banner ads on the Google homepage or web page search results pages. There will be no crazy, flashy, graphical doodads flying and popping up all over the Google site. <laughs> Ever. Doodads. Yes. So this is not... A banner ad per se, but I might classify it as a doodad, for sure. It's a doodad. Yeah, for sure. You're you're bringing stock photography in and making it easy <laughs> to put thumbs up bros on an ad. That's a doodad. Yeah, or or flashy. Either way qualifies. And they've clearly gone back and retracted the don't be evil thing. So I don't think they're worrying that much about retracting what Marissa said in 2005. And also in this article <laughs> from 2013, they did test banner ads in the SERPs and it was a big, ugly Southwest ad and it looked terrible. So I wish Marissa was right, but she's not. <laughs> what else is going on this week? All right. Over on Google, there is a new December 2021 product reviews update that began rolling out later last week when it beca began rolling out. It was on the 1st of December. And this is the second time Google is pushing out a products review update this year. The first one was in April 2021. And I'm naming this the Naughty or Nice update because it's products and you're either naughty or nice with what you did to the updates. No other reason. Okay. Not because I, it's worried, December. Have we used that one before? I don't know, probably. Okay. I mean, we've used December, whatever the date is before too. <laughs> yeah. So it doesn't matter. And so according to the article over on Search Engine Land, um, Google has provided two new best practices around this update. One saying to provide more multimedia around your product reviews. And the second is to provide links to multiple sellers, not just one. So Google posted these two specific items. Provide evidence such as visuals, audio, or other links to your own experience with the product to support your expertise, blah, blah, blah. And the second one is include links to multiple sellers to give the reader the option to purchase from their merchant of choice. And it is rolling out now, and it's only for English language pages. It'll take about three weeks to complete, which again is, oh, let's say the 22nd of December for products. <laughs> and again, <laughs> the busiest time for many retailers in a very hectic year. And I'm going to read this quote verbatim from the article. Google is not directly punishing lower quality product reviews that have, quote, thin content that simply summarizes a bunch of products, end quote. However, if you provide such content and find your rankings demoted because other content is promoted above yours, it will definitely feel like a penalty. It's just like, yeah, you're getting... I he, That's how it works, though. You negative. go up or down. Yeah, I know. I don't know. Whatever. I have a better name, I think. What's your name? You could do like spruce with PRU big. Isn't or isn't that a type of tree? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Spruce. The spruce update. The PRU, product yeah. review update. Yeah. That's I love actually it. actually really good. <laughs> and if it's bad, you got the blue spruce. Ooh. What's wrong with the blue spruce? Feeling blue. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's not a knock to the tree itself. They're beautiful. 
It's time for Barry's Charts with Greg. It's that and this week's <laughs> Chart of the Week. Oh my gosh, it's so early. I know, <laughs> it's a main like, story. This is a new Greg shop, remember? <laughs> and Barry had a very nice array of charts. I personally thought Rank Ranger was going to win this one because it seemed like they're... It's like when Augustus Gloop fell in the in the chocolate and the <laughs> machine started blowing up. This thing is going all orange here since uh, basically December. I don't think that Rank Ranger is making it out of December. Put me on the record now. But the real winner was Cognitive SEO because I love the symmetry in their colors. <laughs> They've got green, yellow, then three reds, then yellow, then green. It just made for the... the, the yeah crazy person inside of me yeah. i enjoyed it's it aesthetically pleasing thoroughly. for sure love it, it. cognitive seo you win the chart of the week and lastly here barry had a funny quote where he said here's just a snippet of all the google organic search changes in the past month so so much and there's the november core update the november spam update other google updates and then it's just there's got to be 20 links of what he's written about update so check it out over on search it engine looks like they could have made it like an advent calendar it's crazy this is just <laughs> don't because next month. year they will <laughs> <laughs> like, what did you get now it'll be oh, cold no. every time <laughs> oh no it's the blue spruce <laughs> now it's time for this week's take of the week this is a hashtag fire digital marketing take with extra spice served up just for you we simply deliver the take for your consumption. We give no opinions. We don't influence. You make the call. All right. This week's take of the week was a quote tweet take of the week. And it came off of the product review update that I alluded to before from Cyrus Shepard on Twitter. And Cyrus said, it's rare for Google to announce ranking factors specifically for affiliate marker marketers. And he linked over and pointed at what I talked about this sentence include links to multiple sellers to give the reader the option to purchase from their merchant of choice to which jared mckernan at jared mckernan on twitter said he quote tweeted and said what happens when one monopoly tries using their anti-competitive power against another it's pretty crazy you just like can't link to just amazon like google's actual verbiage says include links to multiple sellers it's like you're, you're just trying to like get more people in the mix. And Jared's <laughs> not wrong, and I like it. I'm here for it. Thank you, Jared. Now it's time for this week's I See Why Am I. This is something you just might not have seen. Maybe something that you overlooked, but you shouldn't have. I See Why Am I people from Miranda Atkins at Miranda Atkins on Twitter. She says, I spend around an hour each week finding manual placements for YouTube ads, even if they have hardly any views. This little video brought in $4,500 in revenue for 96 cents in spend. And she has a screenshot here to prove it. And then she says, but following up, here's some metrics to show that a video absolutely does not have to have a huge view count or channel with a lot of followers. You also have very low spend with hot, with crazy high returns. And then she has more examples there. She says she only uses manual placements for YouTube campaigns and tells you exactly how you can do that in, th in this thread. So give her a follow and you can read this thread for everything you need to know to use manual placements. Thanks, Miranda. Now it's time for this week's pew, pew. lightning round. At this point in the show, we split up our content into three parts, paid, organic, and social. Getting into the paid news this week via George Wynn for Search Engine Land, quote, a new experiments workflow is rolling out to select Google Ads accounts, according to reports from numerous PPC professionals. Tip of the hat to Dario from the Marketing O'Clock Discord channel <gasps> for first spotting this update. Google declined to provide a specific date for when this feature will roll out more widely. So yes, it was us, it was Dario who broke this news. <laughs> Thanks, Dario. Yes. That's awesome. You go, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because it was your story? No. No. He's a, Greg, he's a, he's a Dar full Greg. Greg 2022. Energy. Yeah, he's a yeah. full Greg energy. Okay. It's his year, 2022. <laughs> <Okay>. Yod. <laughs> <laughs> we, 
So Bar- Dario, I almost called him Barrio. How disrespectful. <laughs> Dario brought this to our attention in our Discord community, which you can join at community.marketingoclock.com. But no one was really reporting on it, and it seems to be rolling out more widely now. I've seen this in at least one of our accounts. I love this. For in the You know in the search engine land articles how it always says why we care? Yes, yeah. I love that. Love that. Me too. I skip right to it. Me too. Yeah. So it says marketers that often use experiments to identify ways to optimize their campaigns may feel that it is, quote, super annoying <laughs> to have to create a draft first. So I thought I was all like feeling high and mighty because like we were the source for this. So I thought it was, I was worried it was going to be a link to me saying that <laughs> super annoying. <laughs> But it wasn't. It was Robert uh, Roberts underscore Danielson. No, it's Robert at Robert Daniels eight. His oh. name is Roberts. He has an underscore on his birth certificate. It's Amazing. Crazy. So he said, "Agree." This was in a response to a tweet from Brett, who also spotted this change. Oh, Brett, Brett Badowski, first name basis. Name. Yeah, agree. Super annoying having to create a draft first. And then George just linked to this in the article. Marketers feel it is super annoying. I love that. It is. Brett also Was. showed us uh, what the notification says when you have to do this in your account. It says, quote, the new experiments page allows you to create experiment campaigns without creating a draft, automatically sync changes from your base campaign to your trial campaign, and receive customized reporting based on experiment goals. So I have not tried this yet, but those all sound like good things, and I'm really excited about this. Thanks for the shout out, George. The new Google Partner Program launches in two months. This somehow really snuck up on us, even though it was announced two years ago, but it was <laughs> delayed due to an unnamed health crisis um, affecting the globe Don't say that we're, we're not going to say on the show. If we say certain <laughs> words that rhyme with Maxine and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to say it. Yeah. I don't, don't want to even get, say the next one. We get no visibility and we have to bleep out any of those words. Okay, so I'll say it right now, but I'll bleep it out. We can't say COVID. We can't say pandemic. And we can't say vaccine. These are current events that affect Cause we re- everything. We reported on Black Friday and said that was a COVID year. And then we got put in, 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 with the bad kids. Well, it's an unnamed global health crisis is what I'm going to call it. So it I'm going to bleep that too. <laughs> there are things going on. Just leave it at that. Well, it did a lot of bad things, but at least it delayed the rollout of the partners program because <laughs> they delayed it like a whole year. That'll be how history remembers yeah. the job. <laughs> um, this email that um, everyone should have gotten this week if they're in the partners program shows you how your agency's partner status is looking once the change goes into effect. And there are three new criteria to remind you if you forgot. You need to, quote, meet the performance requirement with an optimization score of at least 70%. Sometimes I wish I could turn myself into the upside down smiley face emoji, like on the camera. Try. That's really, truly the worst one. But you can turn those off now. And I just go through, I find the biggest ones, and I just say, dismiss all. I don't want to spend more money. You just shouldn't have to do it, though. I know, but you can at least get rid of them. Like, that was one of the biggest wins that we had in all of 2021. Yes. So it really... Maybe the year of us started in 2021 where we were able to get that flipped around. Be the change. (laughs) There is also a 90-day ad spend requirement of $10,000 USD, and at least 50% of your account strategists need to be certified in Google Ads. So if you check all those boxes, you can remain a partner come February. Go melt your brains in the skill shop. (laughs) Okay, so now we have that article that comes out every month from Microsoft Advertising. They're unloading a lot of updates on us. One I'm going to go in in depth on a little bit, and then we're going to fire the rest at you. So as of this month, you can now serve text ads from Spanish ad groups in the U.S. on all devices and publishers. This means that any campaign that has either English or Spanish as a selected language can now serve in the U.S. Spanish ads serve when either the user self-identifies as Spanish speak as Spanish-speaking or the query is in Spanish. So this sounds really cool, but it seems to be implemented poorly. This article isn't written great in my opinion, but it doesn't seem like they're doing any translating. You're gonna have to write separate ads in Spanish, and then you can set the language settings at the campaign level to ad, and ad group level, so you can separate out your English and Spanish ad groups or campaigns. That makes sense. I don't want them to do any translating for me. 
So for your non-branded campaigns, you'll want to add Spanish keywords to your Spanish ad groups that target the Spanish language, even if they're in the United States. Then they have this quote. In addition, make sure you bid boost or have a higher base bid for your new Spanish ad groups so that your Spanish ad can be shown over your English ad and provide the best user experience for your searchers. Shouldn't they know if the device settings are in Spanish and the keyword, shouldn't they know which one to show? They're literally asking you to bid against yourself. But right? you should know the language that is being I know. inputted into the service. I find this very confusing. So, see. Si. Everyone just be careful. Cuidado. <laughs> this sounds like harder to figure out than it was for me to learn Spanish. Sorry, yeah. Ms. Ribadino. Okay. I'm going to have to go to the biblioteca. <laughs> <laughs> That's like very similar in Russian, the word. It's like, bibli- I think it's bibliotech or biblioteca. I don't know wow. why. I know. The Blows my mind. Know. Yeah. We should be able to target ads in Russian too. <laughs> Just for the library. <laughs> okay, so here are the other updates. Rapid fire style. The audience network is expanding to 18 new markets. The audience network planner now sports video and feed ads in addition to image ads. You can now choose between CPC or CPM for audience campaigns for your bidding. Uh, there's a new automated extension that you can opt into that shows how many followers you have on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> this is available Woo-hoo! in some markets. <laughs> there are new in-market audience segments in some markets. There are also expanding shopping campaigns to a search engine called... <laughs> Scott, have you ever heard of this? Called what? It's called Quant. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, they're on Quant? Quant? That's crazy. <laughs> have you heard what? of it? No, I don't know what it is, <laughs> nor do I want to know what it is. <laughs> Q-W-A-N-T. That's okay. a word. I think it might be the worst word ever created. You're worried about current events. We're going to get shut down for I that know. one. Quant. <laughs> <laughs> Who starts a shopping search engine and is like, we need a name. <laughs> want is taken. What do we do? We throw a Z in front of there. Like, oh, no, that's taken too. Nobody uses a lot of Q. Q. A Q usually needs a U after it. Let's ditch the U. We got quant. It's such a terrible word. I'm going to quant right now. Do you think it's quant.com or do you think it's I dot be. quant? Oh, it's, it's a search engine that respects your privacy. I don't respect it. Because no one goes there. <laughs> They'll never know you if you don't show up. Okay, well, I've got a lot of news, so I'm going to keep going. You let me know what you're finding on quant. From Bastine at Bastine31 on Twitter. How can it be possible to have a CTR at 28% with an RSA two times better than the other ads? The higher number of conversions and the ad is adjust, is judged, quote, insufficient just because I pinned some titles to keep some consistency in the wording. This is something that a lot of people have been talking about. Ginny replied from her at Ad Liaison account and said, Ad strength is an indicator of relevancy and diversity in your asset combinations. It means it's meant to be used as a guide to improve the effectiveness of your ad, but isn't used directly in the auction and shouldn't limit your testing. So the diversity thing was new to me. It's like, who cares? Like, if it's performing well, why do I care about the diversity of the ad copy? Like, that shouldn't matter. Um, And why are you pushing it on us if it doesn't matter? Anyway, then in this thread, she says, they're still working on reporting, which you guys doubted. I believe in Jenny, okay? I believe in Jenny and I believe in Santa, and I think they're working <laughs> on reporting for RSAs. So I went to quant. <laughs> I, 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 I quanted the term Greg, <laughs> and up came UrbanDictionary.com, and I'm going to read the definition of Greg. <laughs> Greg. Greg is a family. Greg is an army. Greg is dot, dot, dot. Possibly a cult. We don't know for sure. Greg is the fastest growing community on the internet. Don't look that up. I am truly Greg. You are Greg. We are all Greg. Greg for life. That really sounds like your definition of Greg. That is 2020 you. 2020 you. Yes. Okay, from a non-Greg from Andrew Hutchinson (laughs) at Social Media Today, LinkedIn announced new privacy-friendly approaches to data collection and ad targeting. This is really boring. Um, There's this group identity targeting option, which will utilize its own first party data as entered in user profiles 
to categorize audiences. And then they're also testing machine learning models that estimate and report campaign conversions across channels, quote, with a high degree of accuracy by using data from across our platform. So this is supposed to help us get some of our data back and help with tracking with AT&T. You know, we'll let you know if anything happens. From David Herman at Herman Digital on Twitter, he says, TikTok is going full automation now and targeting at the ad set level. Interesting. I don't know if they're going full automation. You can choose between custom targeting and automatic targeting. Ta automatic sounds a little scary, but let me know how it works for you guys. And from Andrea Cruz at Andrea Cruz 92. BFF of the year. Yes. Claxer's coming up. I know. Mm. I wonder if she's worried about keeping her title. LinkedIn ads added a small chart highlight for website visits and leads depending on the goal type. I just wanted to throw it to you, Greg, and ask what you thought of these charts. I've already had the chart segment, okay. but I, I enjoy. Okay, yeah, they're great. They're very small and... Lumpy. There's no like... They're lumpy charts. Yeah. So that's cool. Leave it to Andrea to find these new features in LinkedIn. And leave it to Brett Badofsky to find new features on Google Ads. Oh, he does have a last name. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're on a first name basis, but I just wanted the listeners to know okay. so they could give him a follow at Brett Badofsky. So he says, finally seeing the asset library in my Google Ads accounts. And he has um, all the libraries listed here from that menu at the top. And the asset library says new and it's circled. I don't know how everyone gets in such nice circles with like the snippet tool. Like I always do a terrible job and they look like footprints or something. <laughs> I do it like four times yeah. and I'm never happy with it. Great job, Brett. I just try once and give up. You're this a better is a woman circle. than me. Yeah. yeah, he's got skills. <laughs> Only in one way. And from Greg of the Year and fellow Greg at PPC <laughs> Greg, custom columns got a makeover and additional metrics in Google Ads. I don't know how to explain this. You guys are gonna have to watch the video to see it, but it looks pretty nice to me. And Oh, I thought we were done, but we're not. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. From Pamela Lund, Queen of Spice, at Pamela underscore Lund on Twitter. Hey, Ginny, any update on when performance max data will be available in the API tools like Supermetrics? And Ginny responded and said, the data will be available via third-party tool providers once they fully migrated to the latest version of the API. From the forum link that Supermetrics had sent Pamela, um, posted above, I see they're actively working on it. So... Don't hold your breath. <laughs> so we thought it was a Google Ads problem. It is a Supermetrics pulling it from the API, which they could. It is Supermetrics problem, not Google Ads problem. Oh, my God, this one, you guys. <laughs> Google Ads announced that on February 15th, they will be ending some election ad serving exceptions. This is really boring. I'm just going to read the quote. Quote, if you want to advertise products, services, and news with ad content in the scope of the policy, for example, an ad featuring a current candidate or an office holder, Google will subject to the representative election ads policy. Google will be subject oh. to the re respective election ads policy. Thank you. I can't read. Just Greg of the year. I sometimes I just let my words take me away. Okay. Yag. The quote isn't over. Back to the quote. Uh. Including the requirement that they apply for election ads verification in order to run these ads, end quote. Also on February 15th, there is a super confusing update about serving options for election ads. Read Barry's post on Search Engine Land for details on that. Ads can serve more places, not less, is basically what you need to know. And starting January 24th, Google Ads will no longer accept W-9 forms for identity, ver identity verification for U.S. election ads. There are a bunch of other, other documents you can use, and Barry lists them all for you in that article. We will have it in Discord and our newsletter. And you may remember from last week's show that Menaham Ani alerted us to the fact that Google Ads no longer puts your campaign back into learning mode when you adjust your target ROAS or target CPA. Just like Monique Samuels in her binder, he followed up with receipts. So... This is an article and it says, in most cases, changing your targets won't trigger learning statuses or reset anything your strategy has learned. That is a very exciting and a welcome change. Yeah, spill that tea. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and from- Isn't e that a, a Real Housewives thing? Yeah. With the binders? Did you quant that or Google it? <laughs> <laughs> I Google it. <laughs> 
Monique showed up with a binder full of like text messages from Giselle's um, baby daddy. I can't believe she would do that. Yeah. Well, did she have a three hole punch? She probably bought it just for this. Yeah. It was a thick binder. <laughs> Who's the guy that had the binders full of women that wouldn't be allowed to run a Google ad? Remember that? Binders full of women. I yes. vaguely remember that. I was Mitt Romney. He had binders of women. And from Ebita at Exit Multiple on Twitter, <laughs> there's this dollar sign stack, comma, dollar sign stack in your username. I don't know what that means, but I appreciate it. Money. Right. <laughs> McKinsey thinks digital marketing LTV stands for loan to value. This is just really sad. It's this guide to a cross-functional agile team in the first Ugh. key to unlocking <laughs> full digital marketing potential like it's kind of like an infographic but like real boring and then it says at the bottom <laughs> drive drives number of customers and loan to value growth so it's clear that they like had this as a company and it said ltv and then someone was like let's oh, spell, it, spell out. it out and then yeah. that person didn't know <laughs> so what it didn't meant. know lifetime value and this is what happens when you hire a big company. I don't know what on earth it is. We work at the company that hired to do SEO. They made every title tag one big run on. It was a, mm. I'm going to bleep that name out, but a big company and they have no idea what they're doing. It's incredible. And they charge like 10,000 times more than we would charge. It's crazy. I bet their loan to value growth is really high though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we have a uh, tale from PPC Reddit here. This was posted by user PPC Please and PPC Please. Is that you? Please, some, you. some help. <laughs> uh, I'm really glad this person is not me. Have you read it? Yes. Okay. It's Literally. called Agency Workloads. Hey guys, this is a question about my nor about normal agency workloads. I work at a mid-sized agency, and this week we are onboarding a big client. This week I was assigned the creation of six. Brand new search campaigns under the account with 10 ad groups each. Fresh ad copy and all new extensions. This is on top of managing and optimizing my direct accounts, about 50, <clears throat> and some of my secondary accounts, about 65. <clears throat> That brings it up to 65 or you think that's no. an additional 65? Additional 65. An additional. This poor person. This is my first job out of college and I've been here six months. I'm so curious how this stacks up to other positions. My job title is PPC Analyst. I can't fathom this. There is no way that PPC Please is able to do a good work on these accounts. That is just too much. When do you sleep, PPC Please? <laughs> the Please is being very polite here. I just, I'm not a hugger at all, and I want to give you a hug. Like, this is not normal. And then I think somewhere in the comments they posted their salary, but I didn't get to that part, and people were like, you're not making enough money. Like, please. 115 accounts? Yeah. That's insanity. And if you want a job, PPC, please come on over here. Yeah. We've got a job for you and you'll have what? Like three to five yeah. accounts. Mm -hmm. How many do you have, Chef? Three. Three. <laughs> so what is going on? Is marketing a clock an account? <laughs> should be. It should be. <laughs> okay, that's it for paid. If that was enough for you guys, what's happening in organic? All right. First up in organic, the official web almanac is out. The 2021 Web Almanac, where they always push the limits as to how much content they can put into one piece. And there's an entire chapter on SEO if you're interested in it. I don't know about where they got some of this information from, but they say SEO's popularity has far outpaced other digital channels. Popularity? What? It's like, no, no, it's not. I get it that the Google Trends topic that you're using shows that. But if you actually look at like volume and a search term, like paid search is right there with search engine optimization. There's a chart yeah. up on YouTube. I also saw a headline that um, Adam Sandler by Google search standards was like the fashion icon of the year or something. Did you see that? No, but it makes me feel better. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's fine. But if you want something else that's also very well done and very thorough, proximawebdesign.ie and Hillary Quinn have web design standards for 2022, where she talks about HTML, CSS, JavaScript, user experience, server-side programming language, and breaks down a whole bunch of it, including web 2.0 versus web 2, web 3.0, not 2.0, <laughs> web 3.0. So check that out. Thank you, Hillary, for putting it together. And next up, Google News is, quote unquote, making it easier for people to find the most useful timely news, blah, blah, blah. It's basically just a new way, a new structure for the layout. And it will be clumped together a little bit more by stories, 
Barry Schwartz has a great example over on Search Engine Roundtable where you can see what it looks like in real time. And next up from Glenn Gabe at Glenn Gabe on Twitter, he says, happy to be back in the test with the new jump links treatment in the desktop Serpies. Now I'm able to see how that could impact the various product review sites I'm analyzing based on the December product reviews update. And these terms are such Glenn Gabe terms. He's out there looking for the best baseball glove for infielders. And you can see like it's the, mm. the link, it's almost like the tab to jump links there. And then another one which I think we're related to because he does listen to the show when he's working out, protein powder to build muscle. Hmm. And really all you need is your audio power here. Yeah, he should try show. some powdered eggs. Yes. Yeah. Get we are the eggs, eggs I do for actually, your ears. I do actually have egg powder, egg protein powder. The, can we talk about extra. that? You keep saying you have powdered eggs. How do you cook them? Um, I bought four cases of powdered eggs. <laughs> I'm just sick of editing myself. Looking, like, I look like an engorged tick. I, I don't okay. understand why powdered eggs are the answer. I still don't understand what you do with it. You eat the powder by the you spoonful? Put water Is it in like it, a Kool-Aid? And <gasps> you put it in the microwave and it turns into an egg. Yeah. That's the goal. It turns into a scrambled egg? Yes. No, it comes like out a in cup. a shell and then so you was... crack it. No, it doesn't. Very it turns Willy into Wonka. a nice little hot cup of eggs. A hot I'll cup of you. eggs. I yeah. don't want a hot it's cup not of that eggs. hard to scramble an egg. But at the office, I'm not going to sit here and scramble an egg. Bring in hard-boiled eggs. Everyone loves the smell. <laughs> See, you Put you're, shrimp in the microwave you're while you're at it. making me sound sane right now. But that's the goal. I just don't want to look like Peyton Manning on the Manning cast at all times when I'm editing. I don't know the reference. I don't Yeah, but an engorged tick is a healthy one, I right? They was, like to no, eat. No, an engorged tick, it's got one little face and it's just the rest that's skin. That's its job is to eat. No, I don't want to look like an engorged tick, <laughs> Jess. All right, next up, Microsoft Edge is now warning users about the dangers of downloading Google Chrome. <laughs> and I've got a few. I've got three oh truths God. and one lie. Don't Ooh. look ahead. Okay? Okay. okay. Which one is the lie? These are what Google Chrome or Microsoft Edge is saying when somebody tries to download Chrome. One, Microsoft Edge runs on the same technology as Chrome with the added trust of Microsoft. Two, Quote, I hate saving money, quote, said no one ever. Microsoft Edge is the best browser for online shopping. Three, that browser is so 2008. Do you know what's new? Microsoft Edge. Okay, the lie is obviously the third one. And the fourth one. Oh. Chrome is totally Mary-Kate, and Microsoft Edge is Ashley. What? That. That's the lie. The fourth is the lie. That's the lie. Yeah. <laughs> How did you know that? <laughs> Because you don't understand the Olsen twin. <laughs> How are any of those dangers, though? <laughs> I like that browser is so 2008. It's slammer. Dangerous. Like, right. You know why it's dangerous? dangerous? Because it puts the black eyed peas in your head for at least 24 hours. What? what? Being so 2008? Oh. So 2000. Forget okay. it. Okay. Wow. Well, like I said, <laughs> I mean, you guys make me feel so young here. <laughs> this is like the fountain of youth walking into this new studio. All right, next up, Think With Google has year-end YouTube trends. I read this entire <laughs> article. I challenge you to find one single trend in this article. I spent 15 minutes trying to find a single trend. I couldn't find it. Audience, if you feel like you can find one, you'll win something. You'll get one of those stickers with Sean Alley on it. But they, the only thing I could find is YouTube's culture and trends team reviewed the top videos from creators around the globe and saw three themes emerge, community, comfort, and creativity. So that's a glimpse into what people are watching, what 2022, 2022 might hold. Trends. Those, those, are, those are just like. Stupid. They're just things that are always. Videos are trending on just, YouTube as well. Just wait. Mm -hmm. Just wait. I don't know. It's, it's going to get worse. But before it gets worse, it gets better. Thank you, Glenn Gabe, for bringing it back. And he was in a discover test where the search bar is at the bottom of the viewport. So it's easier to search or use lens, et cetera, he says. And that Google is doing this to improve reachability based on larger screens. So he said he likes to change. It definitely works. And a picture of Neo there from uh, the uh, concert at City Field. Yeah. <laughs> Good to see you. Another funny thing I thought was from John Henshaw at Henshaw on Twitter. He said, I fixed Amazon <laughs> Amazon's search today. He's been whining about it for a while. And he says, you can now find the brand and product names you search for instead of Amazon showing you every other product but the one you searched for. Wait, this is real? 
it's just a site operator. <laughs> so yeah. it's just your search <laughs> term. And then it says goes to Google and is site operator Amazon.com. But you can it's actually better than Amazon search. Brilliant. So. <laughs> Thank you, John. Check that out over on Koi Wolf, Amazon.koiwolf.io if you're looking to make a search and you want just real results. All right, next up, cheers. Search engine roundtable is turning 18. Oh, so you Barry can vote. Has, yes. Barry <laughs> has been writing now over on Search Engine Roundtable for 18 years. So I think we should give that big congratulations and then send him over a pack of smokes and maybe some whiskey for turning 18. You can't you have, can't have whiskey. whiskey. Okay. Search so he Roundtable. can be arrested for and charged as an adult for drinking the whiskey. <laughs> Great idea. <laughs> All right. And next up, Roku and Google have settled their messy battle. And if you recall, there are allegations from Roku that Google is making anti-competitive demands as part of its distribution agreements, including preferential treatment of its YouTube TV and YouTube apps within the Roku system. <gasps> Google would do that? No. Anyway, they've come to an extension, so you will now be able to get your YouTube on Roku and your YouTube TV on Roku. All right, and next up, if you wanted more information on the Blue Spruce update, <laughs> Glenn Gabe has a very nice thread over at Glenn Gabe on Twitter, and it's early in the rollout, but he breaks down a lot of uh, ranking drops he's seeing, what uh, just a whole ton of examples. If you've been impacted, it it's just he just keeps updating it. So it started, I believe, on the 5th, and every day he's just adding to it. So check it out, at Glenn Gabe on Twitter, and go give that man a follow. All right, and next up, Life360, a popular family safety app used by 33 million people worldwide. Ooh, mm. I just heard of this for the first time. It's a great way for parents to track their children's movements using their cell phones. However, yeah. the markup has found that the app is selling data on kids and families' <gasps> whereabouts to approximately a dozen data brokers who have sold data to virtually anyone who wants to buy it. Yeah, mm. I mean, why wouldn't they? Like... And it is alleged that Life360 has sold your data to X Mode, allegedly, and SafeGrap, allegedly, is another company named. And X Mode has knowingly sold location to the U.S. Department of Defense, and SafeGrap has sold location data to the CDC, according to public records. So I have to send this to my sister in law. <laughs> All right. And it is that time of the year again. Google is re has released their top searches, and they've got one of those. Just unbelievable videos. It's mm -hmm. so uplifting, and you can see all the search terms that are popular, except they're not the real top search terms, and they're nothing that Google actually believes. And I have the receipts, mm -hmm. just like Monique, mm -hmm. all right? And so one of the examples that was in this little binder video <laughs> was how to help our planet. And it was nice, people planting some trees, and it was uh, very, you know, everybody coming together. However, Google makes their Pixel 5 and Pixel 6 products in China due to manufacturing efficiency and cost, which is far and away uh, the globe's largest polluter. Their air pollution is beyond anything else, but I mean, how to help our planet. You go, Google. Next up, they've got an example of people cheering outside and ways to help your community that apparently people are searching. However, Google's taken their core support away from local communities where they are able to pay much lower wages for their support team overseas while still being able to claim that they have human support. You found all of this? Well, I'm just stating yeah. facts here. And the, the, the actual searches are what's in the video. Mm -hmm. And then they've got another one that says, again, this is top searches of 2021. Nobody says, searched this. How no. to be resilient. Maybe is Greg searched search. this. How to be resilient. Yeah. Okay. If this is true, every one of those searchers, or 99.9% .9 of those searchers, are probably Google Ads advertisers trying to stay sane. Right? <laughs> and they're just shoehorning that in. Because I took a look, I went to Google Trends, and I searched how to be resilient. And it is roughly the same level of our frogs human. About the same number of searches. <laughs> and there's twice as much search volume, our, our dreams are real. And those are the first two things that came to my mind. And I put those in, and there's as much or more volume than how to be resilient. But that wouldn't make a good video. Nobody's going to Google and searching how to be resilient. A PPC please might be. 
And then if you look at the real <laughs> things that are trending again, like the number one news story trending is Afghanistan. The number one actor trending, like the actors trending are Alec Baldwin, Gina Serrano, Army Hammer. The athletes are Christian Eriks, DMA. It's like not good. Like hmm. you look at it and you're like, where did you come up with this idea yeah. for the video? How is this legal? And the thing is, nobody asked them to do this. Like, I feel like it's just the nature of the world that you go to search like negative things. Sometimes, sure. like, okay, a guy has a stroke on the field. Like, I don't know. I wouldn't search it, but people want to see. But, like, nobody asked them to make this video and d- say what the biggest searches were. They just want to look good. I'd, I would just appreciate it if one of those was just, like, Alec Baldwin. And they put the real yeah. top global person search in there instead of fluff, how to be resilient, which, again, same amount of searches are frog human. <laughs> Unbelievable. Did you actually then search that? I'd love to know the results. No, I didn't, but I'll quant that quick and get back to you. <laughs> That's it for organic. What's up in social, bud? All right. I'm going to be resilient here because there are a lot of news stories in social. First up, news from TechCrunch by way of Akvila DeFazio at Akvila DeFazio on Twitter. She tweets, Facebook is warning users with a large follower count to turn on Facebook Protect before December 17th or they will get locked out of their account. <laughs> Facebook is making two-factor mandatory for high-risk accounts. This, it, now I'm paraphrasing, it includes like human rights defenders, journalists, government officials. Okay, next up, also from TechCrunch, this is a quote, TikTok has launched a new app for its seller community, taking advantage of its suite of TikTok shopping features. The app is only available in Indonesia at present. TikTok seller, as it is called, allows TikTok seller community to run all aspects of their TikTok shop from their mobile device from initially, initially registering as a seller to managing inventory and orders to analyzing their online business, among other things. End quote. It sounds really handy. Hopefully they'll expand this out to other markets soon. It wouldn't be just in time for the holidays, but better late than never. And speaking of, Greg, I think I might finally have something for you regarding stories and stickers that you can get behind. Great. <laughs> Instagram has added the ability to add custom text to a link sticker. You don't sound like you care, but this is actually something marketers should be excited for because CTAs are a thing, you guys. You don't just want the yeah. link there. You want to try I'm and entice people it. to click it. Read Thank more. Thank you, Shep. Craig, <laughs> click here. I know it's still 2021, but like pump me up too. Let me, All right. bring me up with you. Wow. <laughs> Listen, this is probably one of the more useful things I'm going to report on today. So get excited. And... Icing on the cake, you can also select for more color options from your link sticker, which again, sounds really stupid, but it could make it stand out better on a background image, depending on what you have, or make a more branded feel. So get behind it. All right. Facebook has released their 2021 holiday guide for Facebook marketplace sellers. What? He- <laughs> yes. <laughs> they did this on December 3rd? December 3rd. They let the turkey settle before declaring that it is the most wonderful time of the year. But people are already done shopping. Black Friday is over. Cyber Week is over. Thank you for these key holiday trends I and tips. I haven't started but shopping. I mean, I haven't either. But like these poor people, Facebook you doesn't care about small business. I've a shopped bit. not for the holidays. I put off a lot until like the week before. Well, maybe Santa will come through. He always he does. Always does. <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. Through. My child keeps asking me, Santa is on his way? Oh my God. I keep Bro. having to say, yep. Bro, it's not the 24th yet. <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about? Uh, I don't know. Anyway, download this if you're not really sure what to do with shopping. What if, yeah, it's like, hey, yeah, little dude, he starts leaving on the 7th and just flies around for like 12 days. I mean, it would take yeah. a long time to get around I the whole world. I can understand why he's confused. We just this weekend had a group of skydivers dressed as elves fall from the sky blew my child's <laughs> mind blew his mind <laughs> you need a picture for the video <laughs> did i show you the picture of his face no. he was so cold so it looked like he was crying because the wind was blowing and it ended up coming like half hour later than it should have been we're just standing in this park and he was just like oh <gasps> it just and i don't even think it was elves it had nothing to do with christmas but the fact that humans jumped out of a plane he exploded it have was you ever awesome. jumped out of a plane you no. have right I have, yeah. Tell, you, I feel like, oh, you already have. Yeah. I was going to say, I had a hot do dog right before. Don't do that. How'd that work out for you? Not good. Don't eat a hot dog before you jump out of a plane. Pro tip. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, yeah, I can't eat hot dogs and I'm scared of heights. So thanks. I will align. 
All right, Mr. <laughs> let's just stick with Facebook for a second. Mr. Zuckerberg announced via a Facebook post that we are rolling out a new, this is a quote, we're rolling out a new disappearing messages option on WhatsApp today, so you'll be able to make all new chats disappear by default after 24 hours, seven days, or 90 days. Not all messages need to stick around forever, end quote. I don't have strong feelings about this. I don't care. I don't use WhatsApp. But people in the comments had some things to say. Um, people are asking Zuckerberg to improve Reels functions, which is great. Um, someone said, can you please add one more function after one minute? Disappear messages with two blue ticks. Because some people are like clouds when they disappear. It is a brighter, beautiful day. What? Somebody else said, no, Zach. We don't Zach. want them to disappear. Zach? It's a Zach. <laughs> and then the winner for me was, this is amazing. Wow. It's just like your disappearing human support team. No need for them to be around either, eh, Marky oh, boy? Wow. Wow. <clears throat> yeah. That's right. But speaking of that, I saw this the other day that I thought you could read. <coughs> it has to be on this piece of paper. Oh, sorry. That was my it's disappearing disappear. option. That's brilliant. You planned ahead for that. <laughs> wow. All right. Greg at the air over there. Gunning for it. Speaking of things being removed from social media today, TikTok launches a new transparency center to share insights into content removals and actions. This Article starts out beautifully, Shep. I know you don't like fluff, but it starts with "Tis the season for dot 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 disclosure?" Question Ugh. mark. <laughs> Way to ruin the season. I don't know. I appreciate the journalism. Andrew Hutch coming in clutch from Instagram on Twitter at Instagram on Twitter. Ever heard of them? It's okay to take a break. Heart emoji. We want your time on Instagram to be positive and intentional. Starting today, you can now add reminders to take a break when while you're scrolling on Instagram. Oh, please. I need this at how 4 a.m. when I'm rapid firing memes. I need this. How many times have you got this message already? Sure. I reach the end of my Instagram feed quite often during a global something that won't be named <laughs> when I couldn't leave the house and I have not done it since becoming a mother. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Your boyfriend shop. Um, Adam Masseri, he announced two other features coming to Instagram. <laughs> Did you see his sweater? I bet you're all in on the sweater. Wait, it's no. It's like a very Taylor-esque sweater. It? It's not a cardigan, though. I believe it was a pullover. Where is it? Just click the link in right, the show notes. Like Christmas. I don't deviate <laughs> from the note. Oh, sorry. I didn't put in a screenshot of the sweater. <laughs> Although it matches what you're wearing today. You yeah. guys are vibing. Yes. Oh, I know Adam. He's always hitting on me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't you like that sweater? <laughs> that is nice. Anyway, while you're drooling over that, let me read the other things that he announced. New features coming to Instagram. Your activity, it's called, where you can view all your likes, comments, photos in one place. I don't want that at all. Yeah. Parental controls sound good. Things like setting limits on time you can spend on the platform, allowing kids to share with their parents content they report on the platform, quote, so the family can have important conversations about their experiences online. That is a nice thought, but like, no. have you ever met a teenager? Yeah. What are you going to be like? Hey, Trevor farted onto a match. <laughs> and I <laughs> reported it. <laughs> That's an important conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy's got a video of himself eating boogers. Like, what are they going to talk about? We have this funny thing with our kids. So we're like, no kid is ever going to report <laughs> anything on Instagram and like, tell their parents. Yeah. <laughs> we ask our kids all the time, what's the grossest thing that ever happened at school? It is so funny. They'd be like, like Samantha um, lost a tooth in a popsicle and ate it. And we're like, what? Oh, so, Samantha's here. <laughs> do you wonder Samantha. how much of that is fake, though? Like, they're, I feel like kids exaggerate. No, these are real. He's like, yeah, she ate it. I lost a tooth in a hot dog and ate it, but I didn't know. At least you didn't jump out of a plane afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Another update from Instagram. This one is, by the way, of Matt Navara at Matt Navara on Twitter. Instagram appears to be expanding its test for likes of stories. And then he's got what? a screenshot. No, this is a good. Don't scoff at this. It says we're testing a way to react to stories without sending a direct message. You could just like say that you like something yes. without. But now, now it's I'm checking an Instagram my DMs. Post. It's just an it's just a no, big Instagram it, post. It doesn't mess with your feed. It yeah. keeps the aesthetic it's of your feed. Now your stories feed, and it's got a like. It's a it's the same thing as a post. It just disappears. Yes, but that's important. Mm -hmm. It makes it closer to a real. I feel. I just don't want the it's DMs stupid. every time somebody's it's like, "Oh, your kid's so stuff. cute." No, 
stupid. You should want people to reach out to you. I do, but not with a heart emoji. You know what I mean? Fine, I'll never do it again. Wow. No, I Sorry. love when you Jeez. do it, but then I check my, but then I got real messages in there. I got a reply. Anyway, I think this is great. Okay, up next from TechCrunch, LinkedIn is rolling out Hindi, which has approximately 600 million people globally saying, Aned Kari. What? That's rejoice in Hindi. Of course. I'm sure you <laughs> pronounced that correctly. I, I tried really hard. I listened to it four times. <laughs> All right, from the desk of Greg Finn. Hi, Greg. Facebook business partners, in parentheses, FBP, program is now Meta business partners, in parentheses, MBP. Thank you for clarifying, Meta. Appreciate the acronyms. The anyway, if you see that and Meta. you couldn't figure that out, excuse me, Meta. I like Meta. Rhymes with beta. I'm happy for you. Thank you. Feta cheese. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I don't remember if we talked about this back when he first found it in October, but Alessandro Paluzzi, aka at Alex193A on Twitter, had uncovered back then a 10 second voice clip comment option being tested on Facebook. Now he has found an improvement, and I use that word loosely to that experience. Basically, they've added voice effects. So they've got an alien, a balloon, I assume it's helium, all kinds of fun things. That nobody needs that. Nobody no, needed, yeah, nobody needed the original either. He also found that Instagram is continuing to work on the custom feed by adding a shortcut to manage favorites. This is another October discovery with various timeline options that they're now continuing to approve upon. I just appreciate that he pays this close attention to detail. This one is new also from Alessandro. Instagram is working on 3D backgrounds for video calls. Is anyone Ooh, using Instagram video for video calls? On Instagram. No. Yeah, me either, but you can get a 3D background now. All right, from VentureBeat, Discord enables creators to sell premium memberships to fans. It works just how you'd imagine. With premium memberships, creators and community owners have the ability to gate part or all of their server behind a paid subscription. The memberships can come in multiple tiers, up to three. It's not available to everyone yet, though. They're just testing it with a small group of creators. And you may see it rolling out in the next couple of weeks. Discord will only take a 10% cut. Creators will get to keep 90%. Sounds like a nice place, that Discord. Communities at marketing at clock.com. Yeah. Thank you, Chef. Don't look for Jess in there. <laughs> Craig will come manually over to my office and tell me to look at something and then I'll see it. <laughs> back to Facebook and back to Matt Navarra. He says, Facebook is testing professional mode for profiles. This is currently only being tested in the U.S. Enabling it will give creators access to a bunch of new tools and features meant to help them grow and learn about their audience, generate better content, make more money. I am paraphrasing again. If you want the full details, you can check out Matt's tweet for a link to that announcement from Meta for Creators. <laughs> <laughs> Was that better? Meta for Creators? <laughs> Either way, <Shep. laughs> Last up, if you're a user of the messaging app Quill, I hope you are still listening to me here because they announced this week that they are joining Twitter and formally shutting down their platform ASAP. Per their announcement, Quill will be shutting down. You will be able to export your team messaging history until 1 p.m. PST, Saturday, December 11th, 2021. If you're listening to this on the what? day that we release it, that's tomorrow. So go grab what you need. And seriously, if this is you and you need stuff, they have export instructions in their announcement. So you can pop over to Discord for that link. Short notice, people. And that brings us to our real life segment. Straight out of our accounts and into your ear holes. It's time for working hard or hardly working. I have something that is working hard for me. I'm usually really negative, so I tried really hard for this. Um, I get nervous about the Google Ads import to Microsoft Ads. First of all, I hate that it automatically posts online now. Like you can't just import it to Ads Editor and then post it after. But a little workaround that I've been using is exporting it from Google Ads Editor as a CSV, a CSV, like your campaign, and then importing it in Microsoft and changing things that you need to. Um, and it won't pop, post automatically online right away, and you can double check things and make sure everything is the way you want to be before you make it live. So just a little trick. Greg, what about you? Yeah, for me, if you're ever looking to find a tweet, <clears throat> there is an advanced search on Twitter. It's twitter.com forward slash search dash advanced. And there you can put in certain things like minimum number of likes, dates is a big thing, minimum number of retweets, 
But if you're looking for something in a rough time period, twitter.com forward slash search dash advanced and save it and bookmark it. It'll save you some time. Awesome. I have something positive too, Shep, and I'm usually negative as well. We have been building out a massive site for a client that has content in, I think, 15 different languages or at least 15 different regions and then however many languages within there. And to help us translate all of that content automatically and then let humans go in and fix it, we've been using the WPML plugin. That's what it's called. It stands for WordPress Multiple Language to help you find it. And that's cool in and of itself. But the thing that got me really excited as a marketer was that I was just dreading the fact that I was going to have to make an hreflang sitemap for the site because there are so many pages and it's the right thing to do. But this plugin does it not a sitemap. It's at the page level, but it puts all the hreflang tags in for you. Wow. And it implement it did it correctly. And it's amazing. And it was so handy. It saved us so much time. Super niche. But if you're out there using this plugin, just check it. I found it in the settings. I didn't even know it was a thing. It was awesome. Nice. And now for this week's Cool Tool. As a reminder, our Cool Tool segment is not an official endorsement or paid mention. We're simply sharing something we found in our travels that may be of use to our listeners. And is really, really cool. This week's Cool Tool is the Plepper Local SEO Tools Chrome extension. This baby makes it easy to grab detailed Google business listing information from the results in Maps and Search. With the click of a button, you can see things like categories, like the top categories used for the search results, average categories per listing, max categories per listing, reviews, the average ratings and reviews, mins and max, listings without reviews, attributes used for the business, and business hours. There is also an export function so you can save the data for later analysis, which is the coolest part. Pretty sweet for anyone doing competitive research in the local game. And if you love a good new metal power ballad, you should check out their demo video because the music absolutely bops. We heard about this one from friend of the show, Deborah Masseller, who heard it from Sterling Sky's Brian Barwig at Brian Barwig on Twitter. Again, that's the Plepper Local SEO Tools Chrome extension. We'll have the link in our newsletter and on Discord. So pick your poison. Check it out. And now it's time for our must-read marketing article of the week. An article so advanced, so in-depth, so detailed, we simply cannot cover it in its entirety on today's show. And this week's must read marketing article of the week comes from the one and only Annie Cushing, the real Annie Linux. And she has an article called A Marketer's Guide to Using Regex in Search Console Video over on AnnieLytics.com, not to be confused with the Annie Linux podcast. That is not Annie Cushing. It's essentially how to get more information out of Search Console. And it's a video. So who could hate that? And it's Annie Cushing. It's like the trifecta. So. We appreciate that. Thank you, Annie. All right. That does it for today's show. It is now officially not Marketing O'Clock. Thanks for listening. And we'll see you next week. Thanks for listening to this week's Marketing O'Clock. If you're looking for more information on today's topics, head over to marketingoclock.com slash newsletter to receive every single article we covered. We share the news as it breaks in our Discord community. Head over to community.marketingoclock.com to join. And... We'll see you next week. Welcome to this week's Shooting the Heck. We're after our famous Friday news show. We don't talk about marketing anymore. We just... Shoot the heck. Today we are playing everyone's favorite game. (laughs) It's Guilty Pleasures, where we all go around and confess one of our guilty pleasures. This is something that we take great joy in that we are embarrassed to share. So, Sammy, I'm going to have you start. Mm. This might come as a surprise to you guys, but my guilty pleasure is that every year, once a year, I like to watch the entire Twilight Saga (laughs) start to finish. Is that the one with the sparkly vampires? It is the one with the sparkly vampires. Sammy, that is beautiful. (laughs) My middle school self. Um just really wants me to do this um i i in no way think that they are good movies please don't think that's why this is a guilty pleasure um every time i watch it i laugh a little bit more at the ridiculousness <laughs> of these movies um but i can't explain it i love to watch them once i here. love them i went to the premiere i made t-shirts with puffy paint we oh, wow. i read the books and I listen to the soundtracks in my car. There's some good soundtracks. Good soundtracks? <laughs> what's what's a jam on there? 
Uh, well, I don't like like cool indie music. So like there's like Vampire Weekend songs, I think, which <gasps> sounds like a pun. Aptly named. Yeah. <laughs> um, and like, is the Wallflowers a band? Yeah. Okay, they had a big song on Are one. you kidding? And then the song they play during the baseball game is so good. Like, Take them out the yeah. ball game? <laughs> <laughs> Anytime I hear those songs, it just takes me back. I need. I just need to know what the, once a year is there a special occasion? Yeah, what's or the time you just, of year? Yeah, I like how you're like wallflowers. You listen to like teeny bop Taylor Swift. <laughs> yeah, except for when it comes to the Twilight soundtrack. Even the sound, the score, the. <laughs> so I listen to it at my desk when I'm working sometimes. What? Have you ever seen Jess? Jess, Jess, Jess. <laughs> yes. Let's get these weirdos out of the Let's conversation. Let's get rid of them. <laughs> Why? Are Have you, you ever watched Twilight? Never. Never. Not a so single moment in my life. How can you knock it till you try it? Jess, so I- have you, <laughs> are you a vampire fan? I love vampire culture. Films. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to know what the audience thinks about <laughs> Twilight watching. Anyone? This should be a two types of people. Yeah. It definitely is. But there's only one type and it's the right opinion. It was a moment, okay? And I was a part of the moment. It's all I'm saying. It's like the babysitter's club for Halloween. It has nothing to do with Halloween. Okay. Well, springtime. If you guys are going to be all high and mighty, Jess, Mm -hmm. what is your guilty pleasure? I love to lick envelopes. (laughs) 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 I like the flavor. And then to make it butter, if you really... Yes, the envelope glue. And you want to treat yourself after you take it to the next level. It's a really special card that you're stealing. Have a Reese's. It's the best chaser for envelope glue. Jessica, Jess. You're Jess. under arrest. <laughs> <laughs> I that am so happy like in my life. <laughs> that is like my pet <laughs> back at you, Greg. That is like nails on a chalkboard for me. The like paper feeling on your tongue. You have to be careful not try to cut yourself. Yeah. Just try try Reese's. Reese's. <laughs> the biggest sin out of all of this is that you guys are saying Reese's. Get out, out of here. Try Reese's. Yeah. Try Reese's. <laughs> what do you say? What do you say, Reese? <laughs> well, the she guy's does. name was Reese. So it's Reese's, not Reese's. Reese's. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. just <laughs> Sam <It's> Isaac. Some, <laughs> that sounds like something children like at school. All right. So, okay, whatever. whatever, Samantha. Okay. <laughs> I picked this game today because I was, I'm really feeling one of my favorite guilty pleasures this time of year. I have no shame in my game. I love to eat some fresh, clean snow. I scoop it off my deck with a spoon. You never scoop the bottom in a uh, solo cup. Pour some ice cold Diet Coke on top. Uh, oh. Eat it with a spoon. It's so good. Diet yes. Coke and Snow is my favorite Diet cocktail. Coke and snow. <laughs> okay, I'm trying this when we leave because we it's, just got a mound of snow out there. It's so yes. good. That sounds nice. Yeah. I can't disagree with you. I've never done it, but that sounds nice. People are like, oh, snow is so dirty. Like no. when you don't touch the bottom, like with the ground part, it's fresh. It's been recycled through the clouds. It's the earth. <laughs> it's way cleaner than stuff you eat at restaurants. I think snow is way cleaner. Yeah, I'm you got to eat it day one or day two, but it's delicious. Okay, great. I, I can't wait. You. What's your? I can't, I can't believe wait. everyone agrees to be on that one. It sounds magical. All right, so my guilty pleasures. I am with Shep and Sammy. Sometimes I like going back in time. And I watched the entire Teletubbies season. No, you don't. But that's the same level as Twilight. That's the same level. What? Okay. what? Give it a watch. How many episodes no, of I'm Teletubbies not. are I there? I will not. I will not. How dare you? My favorite thing, one of my guilty pleasures, is when you go to a hotel and you know you're going to go down and get the buffet and you know you're going to be mm-hmm. disappointed. But you do it anyway. You go down there. And the best part is always the orange juice machine. That's it's, the only good thing. And they're like, oh, they got the waffle maker out there. And they got the little syrup cups. And you put the cup in there. You flip it around. Don't know you get ready it, for the waffle. Yeah. And it's terrible. And then you're like, oh, I'm going to get some of the eggs. They got the eggs. It's great. It's, eggs are garbage. And they're like, oh, but they got the bagels. And you're just trying everything. And everything sucks. And I love it. It makes me feel at home. And every time I look forward to it, I don't know why. I'm always disappointed. But yet I'm just so gratified in between and it just makes me feel so good to be disappointed yeah. on that breakfast. Do you feel that, Jess? I love a continental breakfast. It's a big thing in our family and I, I'm so happy to hear you but say that. The cereal, it like crunches uh, yeah. out yeah. and it's stale. It's the best. The, and the coffee sucks. Everything's like the water and orange juice are the only things you're like, yeah, mm. that was good. Yeah. Hampton Inn, they have some good coffee. Okay. They've got Hamptonality. 
You got to try their breakfast. They have good coffee. <laughs> Everything else isn't good, but the coffee's delicious. Like, I'll sneak into a Hampton Inn. There's one across from the Chick-fil-A. <laughs> what? <laughs> and I'll get a cup of coffee. It's really good. You arrested her? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you. You're sneaking into hotels in the town where you live? Yeah. After going to Chick-fil-A? <laughs> And I like it those breakfasts too. I like to like build myself an egg sandwich, and it's never good. But never good. It's never. fun. You, you, you got to try you, different things. You can you cannot find something good in one of those. Sometimes there's bananas. They're usually way too green though. Still, yeah, they're, yeah. They're, even the bananas are bad. Okay, well, let us know what you think about hotel breakfast, and we'll see you next week. <laughs> All right, I thought that was good. I just got so hungry.